Hey friends, so I filmed a video earlier today that was like some reflections and maybe a, maybe rant-ish, ranty regarding social media etiquette and behavior. Oh my gosh, I feel looking back on the video like it was all over the place. So I just want to forewarn you that it's really sort of stream of consciousness. I tried to plan out thoughts for this video and probably just failed miserably. <laughs> Let's just face it, I had a hard time stringing together how all of my thoughts on social media behavior, lack of manners and all of that related, you know, one thought to the next. So in that sense, it really is like a pinball machine where the little balls going boom, boom, boom all over the place. And I just wanted to forewarn you about that. This is one of those chatty, rambly videos. If you're into that kind of thing, hey, grab your coffee, tea and hang out. And if you're not, I totally understand. Please don't feel pressured to watch and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Hey y'all, it's Sunday. It's Sunday and once again, it is 1.30 <laughs> and I'm just starting my makeup. I've had a late morning start. Sunday mornings, I usually spend a good hour, hour and a half talking to my family on Skype, my mom and sisters and all of that. And then we have a nice leisurely breakfast downstairs, which I enjoy. And then I fiddle faddle probably for a couple of hours. I feel like it's fiddle faddling, but is it really if I'm actually doing laundry? I showered, I talked with some friends, like all of that stuff is a value. Yeah, I just never find time for it. And I'm in this mode of like constantly feeling like I have to have an overproductive, overproductive by most other people's standards, but just regular productive by my own day. <laughs> like on the weekends, I always try to accomplish just way, way, way too much. So anyway, I do have a couple of videos to film today. And one of the other things that I really need to do is, well, finish the laundry. There's probably four more loads to do before the day's over. And then I have started, if you look back over there on the little counter, to pack, kind of, sort of, put some things out for a trip that I am taking to Chicago for one night. One night. Like, I'm literally flying in, going straight to my hotel room. Well, I may have dinner with colleagues. I'm not sure how that'll work. Go to sleep, wake up, a full team meeting the next day and then immediately leave the office and go back to the airport. So it's gonna be like one of those quick 24 hour turnarounds and I'm trying to decide what do I wanna take with me? What do I need to take with me? I would love to just put a backpack on. I don't wanna take carry on luggage. I just wanna take my Under Armour backpack. And that's what I like to travel with. I'm gonna just figure out how to stick everything in there and try not to torture myself with what do I take? How many products do I need? Cause y'all it's literally one night. So one thing I'm gonna do tomorrow when I wake up, which will be Monday, I don't know when I'm posting this video, so that you're kind of taking a look in the past with me. On Monday, I will probably not do much makeup. I think I'm just going to do lip gloss and maybe mascara and call it a day so that I don't have to worry about taking all of that off on Monday night. And therefore, I don't need all of the products to take it off because there's like three or four steps that I do every night. I can just do a quick wash and moisturize. That's the important thing. And then the next day, it's going to be so blistery cold. I'm really debating. Do I want like... Y'all, it's gonna be like in the single digits. Do I want a whole face of makeup? I have to walk from my hotel to the office, which I think is gonna be like four blocks. And it's windy in Chicago. That's what Chicago's known for. So I could just see my makeup <laughs> either freezing from the cold or disintegrating from me crying. This is the image that I have in my head of me crying like in the Chicago winds as I'm battling my way into the office early in the morning. So we'll see how that goes. But I did want to talk in this video about packing. And I wanted to talk a little bit about social media behaviors, manners, which is something I've been giving a lot of thought to lately. And I'll share why. And so let's do some makeup together. I don't have my nails done. That's the other thing that is stressing me out. Do you ever feel naked when you don't have like something on? Whatever that is for you. For everybody, that's something different from me. If I don't have nail polish on, I feel super naked. So I'm trying to get over that. Uh, and then at least something on my <laughs> my lips like some lip gloss or something I feel bare but say la vie that's what it is the other thing I'm trying not to do today is like overly stress about making sure that everything is perfect which I can do I can get really kind of obsessive about stuff like that and then feel like I haven't had a productive day or a meaningful day or I messed up somehow and that's just silly I'm really really trying to do as I say not as I do kind of a thing meaning always giving other people advice on like how to slow down not to worry so much and then I end up being like a worry wart sometimes so I want a simple face I think I'm going to try to do a powder foundation 
I do want to do concealer because I'm going to film. So, but a powder foundation and keep those uh, filming opportunities kind of chill. We're gonna go into the Biba palette today from Natasha Denona, which is one of my favorites because I like the color stories that it has, the very, well, it's a color story, but I like all of it. I'm not sure though if I wanna stay in the warm tones or if I wanna come down here to this really beautiful gray toned one. Maybe I'll try that. Um, and then do like a pink or red lip with that. So let's have a little bit of fun with makeup without going too overboard because I want to get going. I cannot believe that once again, I've waited this long to get this party started and then have to film these videos and I'm going to be rushing around tonight like a crazy lady. So let's get into it. I recently picked up the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer in the color Granola 4.5G Golden. And I think this is one that I will go ahead and take with me to Chicago tomorrow. So social media, goodness gracious, where to start? There's so much to dissect and dig, dig into, deconstruct, analyze, unpack, all of those things. <laughs> when it comes to social media behaviors, the reason that I've been giving it so much thought lately, well, two things. See, I don't even know where to start this conversation. One is I mentioned on a previous video that I've been getting, and I always have, but more so lately, some really just random comments out of left field on my videos. Um, do they bother me? Yes and no. Yes and no. No from the perspective that I'm well aware that we exist on a planet with people who have lots of different points of view and express themselves in very different ways. You know, one of the things about social media that is very unpredictable is when you put yourself out there with videos or you're on IG or you're on TikTok or anything, any, any social media platform where your content is open to others, right? It's not like by invitation. Like on Facebook, you at least can limit your profile to your friends. You can make it private so that people outside of the profile can't see it. That's not the case on YouTube or Instagram. Well, you can do that on Instagram, but if you want to have a public presence on Instagram, then you keep it open so that people can subscribe as, or rather follow you as they come to, to your page on Instagram, right? So in doing so, of course, there's this hair sticking up. You see what I'm saying? This is the kind of stuff that I get obsessive about. So when your Instagram and your channel is open to whoever happens to come across it or whoever happens to look you up because they're on one or the other. Like for example, if you're on my YouTube channels, I have my Instagram handle and you can find me there, right? If you so choose. So anyway, people from all over the world, all walks of life, any age group, any ideology, any temperament, any personality type, any outlook on life, any language spoken as a native language can find your content. And maybe they like it, maybe they don't. Maybe they have certain kinds of manners, maybe they don't. Maybe they grew up completely different. And or there are those people that come to content, they come on social media to troll, T-R-O-L-L, -L, to troll. They're there every day, all day, just, just to be snarky. They get a kick out of it. It's like a sport. They kind of surf around and leave crappy comments on other people and they think it's cute and funny. I mean, that's like a societal thing and it's a modern day thing too that that's considered completely acceptable. It's a little bit strange for me because I'm in an age group that's different. Like all of us, if you are in my age group, I'm in my late 40s. We grew up in an era where the way that you behave to other people and the things that you say out loud for other people to hear and to see and to respond to are very different than maybe what today's generation thinks is acceptable to do. I think it's really acceptable on social media these days, especially with younger crowds, to completely troll the comments, to talk about the creator as though they can't see the comments and just go in and say really rude things, maybe intending to be funny, maybe intending to be hurtful, maybe both, uh, and to for yourself as the commenter to get attention by being sarcastic and funny. I get that. I don't love it, but I understand that that dynamic exists. I don't agree with it, but it is there, right? But then you have other people that I assume are in my age group or close by who just seem to not have any, or close enough, close enough that they should know better, to seem to have, they have no chill when it comes to social media. 
So I just had a little interruption and decided to make the best of it. Went downstairs, got a snack and came back up. <laughs> Did some of my makeup while hubby was talking to me and we'll finish up together. I decided on a powder foundation today. This is a, a darker foundation that I normally go for. And you can see it's not quite in keeping with the rest of the color on me, but I really do like it. I'll probably wear a turtleneck to film anyway. And I am self tanned from spray tan yesterday. Are y'all sick of hearing about that? Cause I'm not sick of talking about it. <laughs> love to spray tan one of my favorite things is to just look tan anyway we can talk about the crazy psychology behind that another day but i have the mac mineralize skin finish natural powder this is in the color medium tan which looks like that and i find that it's just a really nice finish on the skin without covering up too much like you can still see my natural skin texture and that i'm a human versus like a filtered out you know Fembot or something and I applied it with this little puff that I got off of Amazon. I got these in a pack of six for like a dollar So I really like the thickness of the powder without being cakey We'll see how it sort of settles in and performs during the day It's been a while since I've worn this and I typically just kind of spot it over my liquid foundation So it'll be interesting to see how it performs on its own at this time of year. Maybe this will be what I take to Chicago, we shall see. So as far as the palette, I did decide to go into the bottom shades. This is a background shade, and then here is through the crease, and this one to sort of darken out the outer edge. I think I want a shimmer on my lid, and I'm gonna go into something different for that. So hang with me. I do want to use the black in here as liner. So let's see what I should put on my eyelids. I said I wasn't going to be fussy and here I am going with something all glittery. I want to keep the look light so I pulled out three of these Stila eye glitter type of things. That's not their actual name and I have more but I wanted to keep the look in keeping with the gray. So this one is called Smoldering Satin. Let's take a look at what that is. These are so fun. Ooh, <laughs> Maybe that's the winner right there. Smoldering Satin. And then Kitten Karma, which is a really popular one. Okay, so that's a little bit more pinky, and that one is more gray. The top one is more gray. The Kitten Karma is more pinky-ish. Pinky, pinky-ish. And then we have Ocean, which, I mean, what a cool name. Ocean. Let's see if it looks like the Ocean. That is really... Oh, over here, you can't see it there. There's like a, a shift on it here in person that makes it look a little bit almost extra terrestrial, purpley blue. I think I wanna go with the first one. Let's go with that, which is the smoldering satin. And let's hope that I don't completely mess this look up already and I'm not even halfway through. I don't ever apply these the way they're suggested. I just do my own thing because I'm a little crazy. That's such a fun, look at that, fun glittery eye. I'm liking it. Let's do the other eye. So where were we with the social media conversation? It's kind of been consuming me just sort of thinking about who I want to be in response to the rudeness of social media. So I think I was sharing that there are people from everywhere, all walks of life that can find you, right? So the opportunity to misunderstand someone's comment is high let's acknowledge that it could be the case that someone leaves a comment that isn't received in the way the person intended that tends to happen like it's not lost on me that social media is mixed company have you heard that term in other words when you have mixed company people that you may know, may not know that well. You behave in a way that's different than you behave with people who you are super comfortable with and have known all your life. For example, you know, we can cut up with our families in a way that we really can't in a public space with people who just aren't familiar with us and maybe don't get us or get our sense of humor or whatever, right? That type of a thing. You can behave with your friends in a way that you cannot with acquaintances because they don't know you yet. They don't get you. So... Wow, what did I do to myself today? What's happening here? Maybe I overdid it a bit, but we're gonna roll with it. So back to the social media thing. Here's where I'm conflicted. In my normal day-to-day -day life, I have certain rules of engagement with people that I have tried to apply to the social media space and have realized it's a totally different playground 
and I need a separate set of rules of engagement for social media, I think, or maybe I don't. And this is where I kind of just wanted to talk through what I'm thinking. So let's go, let's fast forward. There are rude comments being left or what appear to be rude comments. Some of them are just outright rude comments. Like I've had someone call me fat, for example, on a, on a video. I've had um, sexually harassing comments on other videos, things like that. I've had someone, especially on the other channel, that disagreed with an opinion on a fragrance. Imagine, <laughs> imagine getting into a, an online fight with someone about a, an opinion on a perfume. I mean, how bored are we that that's what we're spending our time doing? But I've had people accuse me of being this or that if I thought that a fragrance wasn't good or vice versa, that I, if I really liked a fragrance, then I must be fill in the blank, you know? low life, whatever, there are all sorts of things. So, you know, and if, if I like a fragrance, I must have bad taste or this, that, or the other. People make all kinds of assumptions when they're watching your video about who you are, where you come from, what you have or don't have, and what they're allowed to say or not say. And quite frankly, I just think there are some people that don't believe they should have filters. For whatever reason, they are under the impression that it is okay for them to in typing, open their mouth and say whatever's on their mind. I don't operate like that in the real world, right? Like I have a much more, I have a filter in the real world. I watch what I say to people. I don't always say what's on my mind because quite frankly, it's just not nice. I mean, what happened to the old, if you don't have something nice to say, shut your mouth. Remember that? You don't have something nice to say, keep your mouth shut. I cannot dream of going on someone else's channel disagreeing with whatever it is they have to say and acting a fool in their comments, coming out of my face, saying something that's rude or inappropriate to them or intended to be condescending or hurtful in any way. Do I think something like that from time to time? Maybe. I mean, I'm human. I might go, well, that's stupid. I don't agree with that. <laughs> I mean, I am human, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not an angel, but I would never like in a million years think to leave a derogatory comment or something, like I said, that would be hurtful to that person, whoever they may be, when they're reading the comment. That just feels wrong, off, unnecessary. You know, stay positive. Stay positive on people's comments. But so then anyway, other people, I just messed all that up. You see what I did there? I'll come back and fix that because I have black eyeshadow on my finger. And <clears throat> on occasion that happens, my friends, and we'll fix it later. Anyway, so that's kind of like one of my rules. If I don't have something nice to say, I don't say anything. I won't leave a comment, you know? And if it's someone that I just completely disagree with, like I feel like I have a difference of morals or something, you know, I have to make a decision about whether I want to watch the person again. And that's just kind of how that goes. Oh my God, y'all, look. Ah! Oh, boy. Let's clean this up. I know this is not the proper way to clean up a shadow spill, but we're gonna do it very subtly here, y'all. <laughs> oh, me, y'all. So that's one thing. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything. That's a rule I live by. I don't understand why other people don't live by that. But so here we are in the space of social media where people feel entitled to say whatever they want, even if it's rude. Sometimes I think people don't know what they're saying is rude or they don't understand that, for example, like screaming at someone in all caps and saying something sarcastic is going to come across really rude or whatever. Like you never know why someone is saying something or how they think they're coming across. So I always take that into account. Another rule that I cannot apply on social media that I would normally apply in my real day to day life is assume the best intention. That's a rule that has really saved me from quite a bit of drama in my personal life and in my work life because usually people don't mean much. I always try to think that people are doing the best that they can with the information they have in real life. Like outside of social media is usually what I think. And oftentimes that ends up being the case. Someone may have said something in a meeting that felt hurtful. They didn't intend to be hurtful. And so, you know, don't assign meaning that isn't there to things and don't create meaning unless you have an opportunity to speak with someone and really understand where they're coming from. 
However, that is not how I have seen things play out in social media. Like I am a person that if I see a pattern of things, I need to pay attention to that and adjust, right? You can't just keep doing the same behaviors and expecting different results. That's called craziness, as we all know. Let's do eyelashes first. And I'm breaking into a brand new Dark Star Mascara from Pat McGrath. I tell you, I've tried a number of mascaras lately. I recently tried the Huda one that has two different ends. It has two different kinds of wands in one, and I didn't care for that at all. I tried Too Faced as a Too Faced Better Than Sex, which I normally liked, but recently it has been like dropping down onto the, my lower lids, and I look like a raccoon by the end of the night. I don't have time for that, y'all. But this is Tried and True Faithful, as is Monsieur Big from Lancome. So I need to stick to what I know when it comes to mascara. Although I am trying the telescopic one. Is that from Maybelline? Have y'all tried that? I've learned that on social media, I need to not apply the rule of assuming best intention. I'm old enough and I've seen enough interaction between humans, seen enough comments, read enough comments, counseled enough people to know when something really feels off or to at least trust my suspicion a little bit more than I might have in the past. And in person, it's a really good rule of thumb with people that know you and care about you, your coworkers, your family, to, if you can, assume best intention. It totally changes the way that you approach problem solving if you're having a disagreement about something, right? Then you're less defensive, you're less likely to involve your personal ego in things, and really just try to see things from the other person's point of view in an empathic way, empathetic way, um, so that you can come to some sort of agreement on how to move forward past your disagreements. Because we all have disagreements. We can't always go through the world in perfect harmony with everyone, right? But we have to work with people and things like that. Online, my experience has been the opposite. So it's like I have to figure out a whole new set of rules of engagement. The rules of physics. <laughs> the rules of human physics online are different than in the regular natural world. I have noticed that when I have ignored almost like two the T, 99 out of 100 times, when I have ignored that initial, mm, this person seems like they're being snarky, that, that feeling, and try to reply kindly, or maybe make a joke of what the person was saying or whatever, that over time, the person's comments get bolder and bolder to the point where it's like no longer mistakable it's undeniable that they just have a bad disposition or they think it's okay to be rude on a social media space. They think it's okay to come on your channel and say any old kind of thing. And so I've gotten to the point where, and it's always disappointing. I'm always like, ugh, I was really wishing you weren't the jerk that you turned out to be. <laughs> you know, I was really hoping that you were maybe just having a bad day or didn't know how to express yourself properly and came across a little brusque or something. And... I get to the point where I see enough comments from someone that I'm like, all right, I got to put a stop to this. And here's what happens. This is what I really wanted to get to. All of that build up to get to this. I have, when it comes to social media comments, a good angel with wings and a halo over here and a little red devil with horns over here. There's a part of me when I see a comment that's intended to be anything other than kind snarky, mean, rude, cutting, pretentious even. There's a lot of pretentious comments in the fragrance community. That's another thing to dissect for another day, y'all, my friends. There's this part here, this little red devil wants to let them have it. I want to go into the comment. I want to tell the person about themselves. I see you. I see how nasty you're being. And your BS is not welcome here. <laughs> I want to do that. I want to do that both for myself because it feels good to do that. I want to do it for my audience so that they know they don't have to put up with people talking to them any old kind of way. And I want to, the person to know that they don't get to run through this world saying any old kind of thing to anybody. You know, where I come from, there's a saying, you're going to say the wrong thing to the wrong person one day and you're going to get it. <laughs> 
you're gonna end up in a fight like i grew up you know with kids fighting each other in the yard i don't want that for my own life of course y'all that's not what i'm saying but my point is i grew up in a world where you didn't get to run around saying whatever you wanted to anyone without there being consequences like at the end of the day humans are animals right we're a little tip just fell off. So let me tell you about this product. This is the Huda Beauty Balm Brows. And it has the tiniest little point on it, which is fantastic for these hair-like strokes. But it's a very delicate little, uh, uh, you know, thing that comes out of there, the little pencil part. And so you have to be like ever so gentle. So anyway, I grew up in a world where you don't get to just mouth off and say rude and mean things to people without them popping off at you, as the expression goes coming back at you and putting you in your place and letting you have it, you know? So I don't want to live in that world. I'm glad that I'm out of that world. And I'm glad that I came out of that childhood unscathed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Growing up in the Bronx in the 80s, 70s and 80s was, could be kind of rough, y'all. It could be kind of rough. But I still have that kind of ingrained in me. Does it make sense? It keeps popping off. Maybe this is not the brush for me, but I really do like the little hair-like strokes. So anyway, I want to respond to those people to let them know, you don't get to come on my channel and act any old kind of way. So here, you know, here we are as content creators. If people understood what it takes to have a YouTube channel going and the amount of time that you put into a video, into editing it, the way that you're putting yourself out there to the world, and I'm gonna let some punk, you know, come up into my comments, come up into my comments and say any old thing to me, but that just doesn't sit right with me. Does that make sense to you all? At the same time, I need another one of these. Hang on. Okay, we're breaking into a fresh new, new one. At the same time, the angel part of me says two things, which I've also learned in my day-to-day -day life as ways of interacting or not with the world. Two things that I always keep in mind. Never argue with a fool because from a distance, no one can tell the difference. So if you have an idiot in your comments who's being rude and nasty, what, what do I get out of arguing back with that person? I aggravate myself, raise my own blood pressure, if you will, and give the person the satisfaction of a low vibration response back, right? A low energy response. It, a response that really doesn't represent my best self. It's like almost like an animal reaction. Like, hey, jerk, you don't get to come over here acting stupid like that. What do I get out of that? So from a distance, no one can tell the difference. You look just as stupid when you argue with someone about something dumb. And then the other thing, the other sort of saying that applies here, never wrestle with a pig. You'll both get dirty and they'll enjoy it. So with people that are really nasty or coming at you all kinds of ways, I think the angel angel would say it's best to just ignore them or just delete the comment or whatever or leave it you know some people feel like hey people can come on you know like a, a channel is a public space and people can speak their mind and say whatever I disagree I mean I feel like I'm a little old-fashioned that I tend to think we should still have some level of shared decorum in public spaces I know <laughs> I'm way behind the times on that one but that's how I feel so lately, friends, I've done both. Lately, I have replied very snarky to some comments that I'm convinced cannot be interpreted in any way other than intended to be rude. I have to be careful because there are ways that people phrase themselves, especially from different parts of the world, where it's acceptable to say something in a more terse way than you might in the States, for example. And it's perfectly okay. They're not intending. So I have to kind of check myself. There's, there's limits to that. But I'm talking about in cases where people mean to be just nasty and ugly or confrontational for no reason over a fragrance. Or you want to get confrontational over an eyeshadow palette. Come on, people. Come on, people. With all that there is to worry about in this world. And we got some serious, serious issues to worry about in this world. I'm not going to argue with people about ingredients in a lipstick or sustainable sourcing for XYZ or their opinions on luxury versus cheap fragrances and what they think of. I'm not doing it, but I have <laughs> responded to some nasty comments with my own snarky comeback. So in that way, I've been really human recently. 
I realize that that doesn't serve me. That doesn't do anything for me. And maybe it doesn't do for my audience what I think it does. Maybe they think I'm crazy for that. And maybe they'll think less of me if they see me engaging with the morons. And so sometimes I'll respond and then I'll come back later and delete the whole thing just because I feel bad or guilty about it. And then there are other times that I just delete the comment right away. But I think what I'm going to continue to do, <laughs> give myself another line right there, that I have been doing more and more lately, is just as soon as I get a weird vibe from someone in my comments who seems to just be there to, just to be rude, whatever that may look like, just block them right away. Like, don't even give them the time, space, or energy to engage, to view your content, and to comment on it. What do y'all think of that? I'm just curious. You can't, I mean, there's no right or wrong answer to this, so please don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comments. I may agree or disagree with you and that's okay. I think most of the people over here on this channel are really kind, really genuine folks. We may not always see eye to eye on products, issues, whatever, but I think we have like a mutual respect for each other. At least I get that from most of the comments that are left here. I have had a few weird comments over on this channel and a dismissive comment. There was someone a few videos ago that was really unhappy that I talked about a Jeffree Star palette because the person really disagrees with Jeffree Star's philosophy, way of being, whatever he's done, that's fine. Like if you're that serious about those sorts of things, it's, it's really okay. We all have to make decisions about what kind of media we consume and how it affects us. So, you know, for me, it was kind of like good riddance. If that bothers you, we, we would probably never like be cool in real life. <laughs> I just can't get serious about something as ridiculous as Jeffree Star's personality. I save my serious coins. You know what I mean? Like if you want to cash in coins, I save my serious coins for where it matters and what matters to me. Like I get very serious about matters of life and death. I get very serious about matters of any sort of abuse to humans or animals or anything like that. And I get serious about people putting themselves in compromising positions. Maybe we can chat about that another time. But beyond that, there's very other few things in this world that bother me to the point where I want to like unfollow a celebrity or decide that I can't, you know, listen to someone because of the way that they think. I tend to be one of those really tolerant people that can see, hear, interact with people that have a wide spectrum of political opinions, for example. Someone can be like uber conservative or uber liberal and everything in between. I don't have any problems with that. I'm happy to hear how people think about things. My Where I draw the line is where there's harm involved, like actual tangible not imagined tangible harm and everybody has a different definition of what that is oh i just went down a whole tangent what the heck am i talking about so let's finish up the eyebrows with this kosa's air brow gel which i really like it's not probably any more special than some other gels i have but i love the color in particular here this like chocolatey color so friends i intend to continue to mind my social media manners the part that i am challenged with is like i said that like instinctual reaction uh, set someone straight let them have it if they're trying to come after me or my viewers i get very defensive in that way you know and want to tend to put someone in their place or let them know you can't be all up in here acting crazy but i don't it's i don't know if there's a lot of value to trying to chase that i probably need to just be blocking people more Whenever I block someone, I've never regretted it. It's like, get out of here with your bad attitude, your funky points of view. No one needs that. Like, we're all here to relax. Why do you come to YouTube? I come to YouTube for information, to laugh, to feel something, or to relax. And it's usually the relaxation. I love watching other channels where I can just interact in my mind with the creator, watch them apply makeup, watch them review fragrances, watch them vlog about their daily lives, and just kind of escape into the video and have it keep me company while I'm going along in my life. That's what YouTube is to me. I don't know why other people come to YouTube, and I don't know why these people that have these really strong opinions about things in such a way that they feel that they have to put you down about how they feel about it, why they're there. I just don't get it. So, you know, block and be gone. And don't be part of the little space where all of the rest of us come to just have some coffee and chill with each other. Do you agree or disagree? 
Let me know in the comments if I'm crazy. It's okay if you think that I am. And of course, I'm never talking about people disagreeing. Like, somebody may go, I don't think Natasha Denona's formula is worth the prices, and I'm not interested in paying whatever it costs for this palette. That's fine. People are entitled to have that opinion. It's a whole other thing to come into the comments and attack someone. Why are you spending your money on that Natasha Denona palette when you should be spending your money on this, that, and the other? That's another thing. People coming into a content creator's comments and telling them <laughs> it's the, the stupidity of this, how to live their lives, what to spend their money on, how to recycle, for example, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of folks that come into comments. I'll tell you, I was watching a fragrance channel. Oh my gosh, I forget who it was. It's not someone that I usually watch. And I did not leave a comment. I just happened to see it. I opened it. I was like, oh, let me check out what this young woman's talking about. It was a lovely video. And she was talking about decluttering and how she wants to pass certain fragrances along. And of course, you have that one person in the comments that's like, what are you going to do with all those bottles? Who are you planning to pass them along to? And how many are going to end up in a landfill? Oh, golly gee. Why do you open a declutter video where you know someone's going to be talking about moving fragrances along if you disagree with it and only to leave a negative comment that is not going to be well received, not going to get you anything, not going to get you anywhere. That's called a waste of time, my friends. It's just, it's just like, are you kidding me? Really kind of just, it's sort of depressing when you see people wasting their time doing stuff like that. I'm like, come on, get a life. Move on and bother someone else. Move on and bother someone else. Leave this woman alone. She's going to figure out where her fragrances go and that's her business, not yours. I think it's just like that whole sense of entitlement where someone, a complete stranger, feels like it's okay for them to tell you or imply how you should live. I just, I'll never understand that. I'm going to use Fenty Caramel Cutie, which is a powder bronzer on my face. So then thinking about how those same kinds of lessons and thinking applies to just real life, I remember talking with someone who asked me if I had been invited to do fill in the blank, a thing that by all intents and purposes, I should have been sort of first on deck because of my area of expertise, I should have been invited to do. And I was not invited to do the thing. And I just had a really lovely conversation with that person because they felt like I had been slighted and, you know, I said to that person, and this is like where I need to <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. I said, you know, things, words, behaviors only mean what we allow them to mean. And the person that I was talking to thought that that was particularly noteworthy. And we had a lot of conversation around that. Like if someone, for example, let me go back to like that comment where the guy was like, oh, you're fat or whatever he said. I can only let that mean as much as I want it to mean. I can totally like dissect where that came from and what that means about the person saying it. Or maybe I could take it to heart and think maybe I am fat. Maybe I need to do this, that, and, you know, whatever. The point being that your mind filters information in the way that matches whatever your life experiences have been and whatever context you learned about the thing in. So thankfully... The word fat, for example, does not carry stigma for me. And I didn't think anything of it. I just thought this guy's a jerk and he needs to go. That's it. And I blocked him and I haven't heard from him since. And my life has been all the better. My social media life, rather. <laughs> um, but anyway, back to the real life situation. I could choose to feel like I had been slighted by not being invited to participate in a specific thing. Or I can think nothing of it. There could be a thousand and one reasons why I wasn't invited. Maybe other people had more expertise. Maybe the table was already full in terms of people invited to talk about it. Who knows? Maybe they thought I didn't have time because I'm involved in other things. You just never know like what other people are thinking. So I'm still thinking that way in real life. But in the social media space, if I detect snark or bad attitude, the person's gone. That's what I'm saying. Like That's where my mind is moving toward and that's what I think I need to be doing and just be more vigilant about allowing people like that to stay in comments or not. You know, like here I am putting myself out here on video and I've got some moron thinking it's okay to be rude and mean. Come on, come on. I like that look. Let's do a little cheek and lip and get the shoulder out.
I have like literally lost the concealer I was working with. I can't figure out where I put it. I'm losing my mind. I'm going to use Cover Effects, this soft peach here. I don't know if I want to do a peach or pink lip, so I'm not pretty. Now, I know back to the topic that some of you out there go, well, don't let people bother you. You know, that's a lot easier said than done when you're the target of it. You know how that is? And I'm trying to cultivate not letting those things bother me. And like I said, in a way, I don't. In a way, I'm just like, you're just a moron. Delete, goodbye. And in a way, I'm just like, it's not that I take the comments to heart. Not that. Like, I have enough self-confidence at this point in my life to not internalize whatever the comment is getting at. It's more shock at the audacity that some people have to come out of their face, as the expression goes, come out of their face and feel entitled to just say stuff, you know? I like that a lot. Do we, what do you think about this look? I don't know that I want to put any kind of highlighter on. Let's look, this is enough going on in here. Do I really need highlighter? Let's take care of the lip. And I may do just, do I want to do a glossy? Do I want to do a glossy lip? No, I don't want to do a glossy lip. This is Anywhere Caffeine Artist Color Pencil from Makeup Forever. This is from ColourPop and these are old. I don't even know that they sell these lipsticks anymore. This color is called Uno Mas, which means one more. And it's kind of like this pinky peachy color. Let's see. It's slightly bit ghostly on the lips, but that's what I'm going to do. So this is the look that we're going with for today. And I guess it's like close to three o'clock now with all the distractions that I've had. I'll try to film a video or two for the other channel and go from there. Thank you so much for hanging with me and listening to me ramble and babble about this social media thing. Really at the end of the day, if I didn't have channels and I was talking to someone who was asking me about social media etiquette, I would tell them to treat it like a mixed company space. Mind your manners, keep it light and fun and positive, uh, and don't get personal, don't share too much personal stuff, well, as a, a viewer, right? And don't leave comments unless you have something positive to contribute. It doesn't mean you have to agree with the content creator, but if you disagree that you do so in a way that's respectful of the person and of the, the general audience that's in the comments. I, let me know what you think. Like, What rules do you operate with in terms of how you interact with channels and other people in comments, like other viewers. You know, I will say this, sometimes I'll be on someone's channel and I'll see someone else leave a really rude comment as though the creator can't see it. And of course, I'm like, what are you doing? That's just so, I need a matte lip. This lip is not gonna work. What are you doing? Why are you leaving a mean comment? Um, and I wanna defend the person and then realize that's not gonna help the person or me or the person leaving the nasty comment understand why they're being jerky. Is that better? It's so, so shiny. I don't have the right kind of matte. I could do the little trick where you put powder on it. Hang on. You put powder on it to mattify it a bit. You just have to find clean fingers every time you go in so you're not contaminating the product. Okay, that mattified it a little bit. Oh, this was a long video. Love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to me and be sure to drop your thoughts in the comments. Thank you. See you in the next video.